and welcome to Kinevision, the Stanley Bryan new speech synthesizer for the Amstrad CPC. Back in the 80s, we all saw those DKtronics adverts in the computer magazines for speech synthesizers and thought, that's cool, but then thought, well, yeah, beyond making it say rude words, what could it do? And um, I had an email a few months ago from California, say, from a guy saying, hey, would you be interested in reviewing a new sp speech synthesizer for the Amstrad CPC? It could replace my speech. Um, and it turned up like Apple Goods from California, or design, designed in California, literally designed in California, this device. Uh, Michael Wessel um, produced it. I think he's natively from Germany. Uh, apologies if I'm wrong there. Um, I think he... Uh, certainly on his CV, University of Hamburg, uh, a while ago. And um, yeah, I got this fantastic board, which appears to be a traditional kind of CPC board on the bottom with a couple of old school LEDs. And then this Epsom board on top, which is marked text to speech. And by the way, if you're wondering what the background noise is, there's two guys just down the road with a leaf blower each, um, kind of blowing leaves around and it's also raining. So I, I need to get this video done. So I'm just cracking on. Um, to tell you a little bit about this device, and now I'm reading from Michael's page here, Lambda Speak, a next generation speech synthesizer and PCM sample player for the Amstrad CPC. It is more than just a speech synthesizer. It also does Amdrum uh, music as well. So literally reading from the page, it's a next generation speech synthesizer and PCM player for the CPC. Uh, it is an MX4 compatible I.O. extension that plugs into the expansion port of the CPC. Yes, you will need a expansion board to plug it in because that will not plug directly into a CPC. Um, you will need a, I will take, show you a photo of it because I don't want to unplug it from my CPC, but it's what I've got my M4 board on. And uh, Michael also sells those as well. Uses an Epsom S1V30120 TTS, that's a text-to-speech chip and a microcontroller, which is 20 megahertz, which is running the firmware. Basically, it is a speech synthesizer, PCM player, and it uses the $39 text-to-speech clickboard from Microelectronica, which is uh, that board there. And it's a board which consists of an IC, an op-amp, and an audio jack, because it needs to inject the audio from there through to the bottom board there, and then you take your audio out of there. So what happens is the CPC communicates with this board, which is a traditional kind of CPC uh, expansion. It goes through to this little board there that does the text-to-speech, and then it sends it out the audio jack there, back into the card there, is potentially mixed in with things from here, and then it all comes out of there. Now you won't get the CPC audio itself out of here. That will come still come out of the speaker or the audio jack on the side of the CPC, as per the DKtronics arrangements back in the day. Um, it perhaps would have been nice if we'd have plugged the CPC audio in there and it all comes out mixed. Um, it's not the biggest problem in the world, um, but it's something to be aware of. And that does mean you get this cabling all around the back as well. You could probably make a smaller cable, and it is just a a stereo connector there. I don't know why it's stereo actually. You would have thought it would have been a mono through thing, but apparently not. Um, but um, there may be reasons for that. Um, perhaps it that board there uses stereo. Um, it's either mo it may well be the same on both channels, but it may just because it's easier um, to save it coming out of one speaker when you plug that board into something else. Um, I don't think that's anything to do with Michael. I think that's just an Epsom decision there. The board has a native Epson mode, which is the default mode the board will be in. It can also uh, emulate an Amstrad SSA1, which is the mode you'll need if you want to get speech out of Amsoft games. Uh, the SSA1 wasn't particularly good at speech, but uh, this thing will emulate it. And you also have DKtronics emulation as well. And uh, there's various other features that we will come on to. And for those who like to see the underneath, this is the underneath of the board looks hand soldered. I mean, you're going to expect that on a low run of uh, devices. A couple of little wires running across there. Um, perhaps an afterthought there. 
um, to run those across after the PCB have been designed. It's entirely possible that our future revisions will have that built into the circuit board instead of just having those wires running across there. I'm not sure why that would be. Probably just a performance issue, sound quality issue, something like that discovered after the board was made. The board is very well built, but I've got one little minor gripe I just want to show you. This little board here, uh, the Epson board, it just moves around a little bit if you're not careful. Um, it flaps around there in the breeze, as Dave Jones would say. Just needs, and you can do this yourself, a little space or something in there to stop that from happening. Otherwise, you start, you just, you know, moving your CPC around, suddenly it's just kind of, oh, look, the pins there are up in the air a little bit and it's moving around. And long term, it probably won't do it any good. So that's just wiggling itself free. So I would just potentially just put a little spacer in there just to make sure. Oh, down it goes. It just doesn't doesn't move around. Very, very minor niggle. Very minor. Right, so time to fire her up. You simply plug it the device into the your expansion board on the back of your CPC. When the CPC turns on, you will hear the following. Lamp to speak initialized. SSA one mode. And that's played out via the jack on the device itself. And when the device is processing speech, a little blue light flashes on it as well. It's quite bright actually in your eye line um, if you've got it sitting upright like I have. But the best way to test this, first of all, I find, is to load up a game you know has SSA speech emulation in it. Right, speech emulation? SSA support in it. And the game I know that supports it is Roland in Space. So here we go. Let's load up Roland in Space. And there we go. We get some audio. Um, something, something, something. Hyperspace Soul 3. Yes, the Amstrad SSA1 speed synthesizer wasn't very good. That's no reflection on this device. It is recreating that original Amstrad speed synthesizer, which is a... Well, it's the 1980s speech synthesizer, in effect. Uh, there's very little speech in the actual game itself, although it does shout motivational messages at you, like, go for it, from time to time. And if you drop a long way, it goes, ouch, my feet hurt. And if you bang your head, it goes, ouch, my head. Uh, that kind of thing. The benefits to the game are, are none. It's just you get to have a nice warm feeling that you've spent some money on a peripheral and some software actually supports it. 3D Stunt Rider also supports it, although I can only find the one time in the game where speech appears. Various other Amsoft titles support the speech, as well, including Alex Higgins' uh, Snooker. But it's all very, very minimal. It's all been shoehorned in to sell a few speech synthesizers. Nothing particularly special about any of them. This is not why you would buy this speed synthesizer. Indeed, it's not really even why you buy one uh, original Amstrad one second hand. One non-Amsoft game that supports a speech synthesizer is Tuba Ruba, which many people think is an Amsoft game, but isn't. It's Advanced Software Promotions, in terms of Alex. I think it's called. It's also one of the last games written to have support for it, coming out in late, in terms of Alex. or mid to late 1986, I think. And it just shouts out intruder alert at you, mainly, at random points through the game. Gives you an extra sound channel, I suppose. Um, they don't use it for that anything other than shouting intruder alert at you and messages um, about you die at the end of the game. You've got no energy left. Because of the way the SSA one works and because of the way the speed synthesizer works, there's a short delay between the computer sending the command for speech and speech actually happening, so that can be a bit odd as well if you're waiting for the speech, especially in Tuba Ruba when you die, you're dead, and then it tells you you're dead, um, which is a bit odd. Well, yeah, if you look at Tuba Ruba, by the way, and thinking that game looks nuts, yeah, it is, and I'm going to do a review of that very soon. The better way to test the speech synthesizer is with the demo disc that you can download that has some tools on it. So let's run the actual official to demo. Initialized. SSA1 mode. Native Epson mode. Non-blocking mode. Hello, how are you? 
I am lamb to speak 123 million 456,789. May of date out Happy birthday, dear Deck Talk. Happy birthday. Current volume 13. Current speed rate 9. Voice set to 2. Current voice 2. Current voice 2. The device will also always say what mode it is in because it can do DK Tronics, SSA1, and Deck Talk as well. And that's the listing for what we've just seen there. Hello and welcome to Kinevision. This time we try a new speech synthesizer for the Amstrad CPC. And as you can see from that as well, you can integrate speech into your basic programs really easily. Simply pass a string to the device and it, it is text-to-speech. So that's exactly what it does. And that's how I do the intro message. There's other ways to do it, but I decided to do it that way. There's a copy of Eliza as well on here, the computer program that the talks back to you. Now. And this literally will talk back to you. Hi, I am Eliza, the famous computer psychiatrist. Although this text-to-speech appears to only have a male voice, so it's a, a male Eliza. May I call you Alan? Alan. The, yeah, uh, again, these well, things are... If you thought the SSA1 was bad, that's because of the age, but this new modern text-to-speech still isn't perfect. It still gets words wrong. And you can still confuse Eliza as well. Call me Lord Sugar, it doesn't understand. I do. How strongly do you really do, Alan? Yes, I, I, I should. How long have you been here? It's not the quickest uh, implementation of Eliza in the world, but it is running entirely in locomotive basic, and they've added a lot of code for more speech and things as well. I do not quite understand what you are driving at. And so on. It's Eliza. It's just a demo of how the I tech can be used with your basic programs. Do you really need your green jelly? Do you often make remarks like that? Lambda Speak also supports Amdrum, which is actually quite useful because not only can you run the Amdrum drum synthesizer program, well, it's actually not a synthesizer, I suppose, because it actually plays back real samples of drums in 8-bit quality, but this also enables it to play back samples as well. We'll, we'll see details of that in a minute, but here's Amdrum in action. One thing you have to do is make sure you enable Amdrum, which you do from a command from BASIC, or you can load in the RSX commands. And in fact, these are the RSX commands here are kindly put together by TFM of the CPC community. I know you can see lots of different commands to use. So this is the PCM test to make sure the samples are working. PCM test. I'm completely operational. I'm completely operational. I'm completely operational. I'm and the manual does in fact say, and there is excellent documentation for this, that uh, the only way to kill I'm the PCM test is to turn the CPC I'm off. I'm completely operational. 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 I'm One thing about the PCM test is that the man I'm does warn you that once you activate it, the only way to I'm kill it is to turn the CPC off. I'm completely operational. And that also relates to the Amdrum PCM playback mode, where you can play back normal speech I'm and things and, and samples, and that's absolutely fine. I'm completely operational. But the only way to get I'm it out of Amdrum mode afterwards is to, again to turn the CPC I'm on and off. There's many, many commands, too many to go through here. You can do things like make it speak what's on the screen, which could be useful, especially for blind users, actually. It's a good practical uh, implementation here that of things you could use it for. 
you can turn it into DKtronics mode, you can talk into deck talk mode, flip between English and Spanish, and change the rate of speech. Deck to step and stump for lint vehicles. DRS eight through with herring root gelatin. Adaption takes place. Of course, speak screen only works CS. well if it can continuously NF1. read the screen. So, yes. in something like this, Quick where there's screen. little windows in operation, it, it doesn't work too well. And here's a little test program or test RSX that will sing to you. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I am half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage. But you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. And now, finally, what you've all been waiting for, a little bit of PCM sample playback. <laughs> so what's the point of all this, then? I mean, you're thinking, well, do I need this device? in 2019 and i'd say well if you're asking that question you probably don't need it there's not an awful lot of games that support it and unless you're a cpc power user you're not going to have much use for it sure it's cool to play roamed in space and tuberuba and have the speech going on and it's a novelty for the first time until you realize it's shouting the same thing over and over again but that's not really what this device is about what this device is actually about, I think, is the PCM support and the Amdrum support. And it gives you those facilities. The DKtronics and SSA support for the speech synthesis are they're nice to have. They're pretty cool, but you don't really need them today. But if you're a CPC power user and you want PCM support, able to play back samples and integrate those into your programs, if you want deck talk, to work for you so you actually have proper text to speech for whatever reason amdrum support is nice to have although the fact that gives you pcm playback is much more important or you may just be a tinkerer who says hey this board can do lots of cool things i want to play around with this on my amstrad and see what i can make it do and that's really where this board comes to its own it's not a cheap device to own and availability is limited and you're going to probably need to spend another $39 to get the expansion riser that enables you to plug one of these boards into the back of your CPC. It comes down to, does this device interest you? Will you get value for money from it? If those two conditions are met, then I think you'll find this device very interesting and it will let you while away quite a few dark winter nights just tinkering making your Amstrad CPC do things you perhaps never thought possible. <laughs>